And I awaken on Monday to a knock on the door. Female voice. Mr. Franco. I feel like it... Like it could be Potsdam, but... Potsdam usually just uses, call, uses their first name. Hmm, I don't know. Mr. Franco? I won't answer. I didn't know you as well as I thought I did. I step outside to find Professor Possum smiling at me. Good morning, dear. These are for you. She hands me a folder bulging with papers. The label on it reads Election Protocol. Have a look through, then meet me after class today to discuss your campaign strategy. Wouldn't it have made more sense to give these to me on Friday so I could study them over the weekend? A leader must be swift and decisive. You don't always get to plan ahead. Until then, toodaloo! She winks at me and sweeps away. Well, before anything else, I need to decide on my schedule for the week. I guess. I don't- I just don't know how we ended up being so schemy, but you know what? It's fine. Whatever, man. Alright, well, we'll get all the stress. Or maybe we should do sleep at the- if we only get one, though, then we're only gonna get to 24 stress. I wanna get to at least 25 stress. Maybe even 30 stress. Imagine the possibilities. I wanna know what our our maximum de-stress is. Okay, we're learning something new. We have previously discussed the subject of translocation when it comes to objects. The relocation of self is more complex. In essence, it is the same spell, altering the location of a single target, but it requires greater focus. It can be difficult for some to accurately picture themselves in order to correctly visualize being elsewhere. Imprecision can lead to materializing off-target, which might cause you to fall and injure yourself. In addition, many find self-relocation to be somewhat disorienting. In rare cases, this can lead to an accidental magical outburst during or after the process. Eh. For this purpose, your first attempts should be supervised by a qualified wizard. We spend the rest of the day taking turns to teleport ourselves around the room and eventually the school. As far as I can see, there are no accidents. Hooray. Twenty. Allows the caster to relocate himself to a nearby known location. Twenty. I'm gonna have to look at my, uh, my actual spell book and see if it does actually cost twenty or if, it, if the twenty means something else. I head out early to meet up with William. Hi, Franco. The main things you need to do today are to pick your campaign theme or slogan, and to decide how you're going to spend your budget. Then, tomorrow and for the rest of the week, you have to attract as much attention as possible to yourself. If you look like a leader, a lot of people will believe that you are one. So, themes. Some people go with joke campaigns, puns and silly names, and things they think will be memorable. A guy ran as a grocery list once. Buy milk, buy bread, buy cheese, vote Fred. I wouldn't recommend it. It's better to associate yourself with a powerful mental image, even if it doesn't connect to your name. Dragons are always popular, but kinda cliché. It'll do, but you could do better. A creature from your own homeland would work better if it's something people will recognize. I don't want to be too specific about my identity, but a golden eagle might be an appropriate way to symbolize my heritage. Americans like eagles too, don't they? The other thing you have to do today is order your campaign materials. I hope you've saved up some allowance, because funds are required to come from the candidate's own pocket. However, since the time frame for elections is so short, the school will provide the materials to order. So you won't have to stay up all night with markers and scissors. Now you absolutely want at least posters or badges. That's the basics. That shows everyone who's running. Badges are probably better. 
People find it fun to collect them, so they'll naturally help spread them around. You can give away food. Everyone likes free food. But then it's gone, and they may not even remember who gave it to them. Upperclassmen have the option of buying custom-made treats marked with their slogans, but freshmen can't afford it. You've got a tough challenge ahead of you to beat Minnie, so take every boost you can get. But if you're going to be a leader, you need to make the final de decisions yourself. Good luck. He leaves me to make my way to my meeting with Professor Potsdam. I arrive in the empty conference room and take a seat, spreading out the folders worth of papers in front of me. The elections are held on Friday afternoon. By then, I have to design a campaign, promote it, and write a speech to convince people to vote for me. That doesn't leave much time for trying to decide what I'd actually want to accomplish as a leader versus what I need to say in order to get elected. I doubt the school would let a freshman class president change anything of substance, though. It's probably just a title. Hello, Franco. I'm sorry that I'm late. There was a little bird in need of assistance. Well, are you ready to begin? Yes, ma'am. The first thing that we need is your official campaign nickname. That's how we'll announce you on Friday when you give your platform speech. You should also design your marketing material around your theme to tie the campaign together. How do I want the student body to think of me? The Wolf King, the Golden Eagle, the Sock Monster, the Nameless. I think when we were cutie we were like the dependable draft horse. <laughs> or something like that. Um, I can basically guarantee Sock Monster and Nameless are not going to work. Um... Let's take our campaign manager's advice and go with the Golden Eagle. The Golden Eagle. Very majestic, though some might wonder why when you are not a falcon. The Eagle is stronger than the falcon. It's the best of both halls. You also need to decide how to spend your campaign budget. Now, candidates are restricted to using their own spending money to fund their campaigns. However, your parents have requested a special arrangement. Uh-oh. If you take an advance against your weekly allowance, you will have a full $100 to spend on campaign supplies. Isn't that cheating? Oh no, dear. It's just a clever application of the rules. The funds are still coming from your school spending money. You won't receive any allowance for all those future weeks. Any student who thought of it could have made that request. But I didn't think of it. My parents did. William said I needed every advantage I could get. Mm. I kind of want to take the money, not for the campaign, but just so that I have money to go get my stupid charm finally, because I've missed out on weeks. If I had known that I could... I was getting money, I could have bought my charm and still have taken the advance. <laughs> sure. Alright, I'll do it. Well then, what would you like to order? I'm sure you'll want posters and paper badges for your supporters to wear very popular. We have some supplies in stock and I can fetch a few other things from off campus if you need them. Now, if I remember, assuming this game goes off the same principles, posters don't actually do anything for you. It's just like the bare minimum you need in order to run. So if you're... That's, I think that's what it used to be. Um, all of these give you a point towards your voting. So your name does, and then these do... And I can't remember if there's one other thing that influences how many votes you get. It's been so long. I kind of think if we do paper badges and standard cupcakes, we'll be golden. 
And then I have a lot of money still. And that's it. Alright! I'll have those supplies delivered to your room in the morning. Good luck! Thanks, madam. Madam Potsdam. This morning marks the beginning of the highly abbreviated student council campaign season. The campaign materials have been delivered to my door bright and early. I have a few dozen chocolate chip cupcakes iced with Wolf Hall Orange. Not as striking as the fancy ones would be, but everyone loves a treat. Cupcakes aren't really a breakfast food. I slash them in my room to hand out after classes. I have some badges made out of gold paper in the shape of an eagle with wings spread. Written on each one in black ink, Franco Franco for president. There's also a little box of straight pins to attach the badges to robes. I need to go out somewhere with a lot of people so I can give these away. I knock on Donald and Luke's door. Ready to go fight the good fight? You bet. Are you sure you want me along? You know a lot about attracting attention. Just don't set anyone's hair on fire. Of course not. I already did that one. Logan's helping Jacob with his campaign, so he can't join us yet. But Jacob's going for treasurer, not president, so we're not rivals and we can still stand together. Good to know. Now, let's go. Yeah, Jacob wants to spend time with Minnie. I spend the next hour with my hallmates, introducing myself to every student who passes and giving them my badge to wear. There's no time for serious conversation with anyone, and it would be hard to hear anyway, considering all the other candidates out on the quad this morning competing for their attention. I don't recognize all the candidates, especially the upperclassmen, but I know a few. Logan's roommate Jacob is easy to spot. He appears to be using a fireball as his symbol, and is giving out some sort of red candy. That wasn't on the school materials list. But I suppose there isn't a rule against buying candy ahead of time. And then there is Minnie Cochran, surrounded by well-wishers and nearly bouncing on her toes from excitement. Each student that she speaks to walks away with a yellow paper hand pinned to air robes. Well, I can't concern myself with her. I have a job to do. This is a good way to get my name out there, but it's tiring and boring. Well, I'll definitely have a lot of stress to work away. Definitely, definitely. I leave a little bit early so that I can have a table set up on the main pathway by the time the classes are letting out. I arrange the cupcakes in an artistic pattern and prepare to smile and wave. Smile and wave, boys. As I expected, most students were happy to receive a free snack. But I'm not certain that all of them even checked to see who I was before grabbing the food. Eh, what you gonna do? If yesterday's campaigning was a dull and distant roar, today is more like standing directly under a waterfall. Oh my. Hello. All over the main quad, students have taken up positions shouting slogans and pressing colorful pieces of paper onto anyone who passes. Every year has multiple positions up for vote, multiple candidates for each position, multiple supporters for each candidate. Those who can are spraying magical sparkles or calling down beams of light around themselves to attract extra attention. Custom appears to prevent them from using spells to amplify their voices, at least or we would all be deaf. Instead, everyone shouts messages as best as they can. Taste the victory! Angela for president! Gargan for secretary! The strength of the oak! Vote for Jacob the blazing fire! Follow the guiding light! Vote Bayolin! Vote for Franco Franco the golden eagle! William is at my side with so many of my badges pinned to his cape that it looks like some sort of patterned show. He chants along with me, smiling and waving at everyone who passes. Does having the senior class president on my side not count for anything? The freshmen always look pleased when he catches their eyes. Male or female, a lot of people admire William. I do my best to greet as many people by name as I can. Will it be enough? Well, we'll find out soon enough. I 
If I don't fall over from exhaustion first. Another day. Another morning of smiling and waving and trying to look my best. This time I'm on my own. It wasn't fair to expect other people to get up early every morning when they weren't even candidates. But I won't give up. I am going to fight this thing to the finish. And then I hope I will sleep. Sorry. Across the quad, I can see Minnie, my opponent, cheerfully engaging with the crowds. With one exception. Barbara Salmoro, the quiet girl from Snake Hall. They're too far away for me to hear what they're saying, but I can see Minnie offering a hand to Barbara, and the other girl jerking away. Barbara throws her arms out behind her, her hands curling like claws, her teeth bared. Minnie looks startled and slowly backs away. Interesting. I guess Barbara is even more tired of these campaigns than we are. Is there bad blood between Barbara and Minnie? That could be interesting. Surprised I'm succeeding considering how stressed out I am. After activities on Friday, each class has a scheduled time to come to the gym, where the officer candidates will make their final speeches before elections. We aren't allowed to vote in the elections for the higher classes, nor are they in ours. Each class is meant to function as a separate unit. In theory, we know our own members best, and we know what we want as a group. Therefore, we are not required to attend the speeches for the other classes. The freshman slot is the last one in the day, but I chose to come in early and watch a few speeches to get a feel for how things are usually done here. The candidates for president speak first, then the treasurers afterwards. It seems backwards to me, but I don't make the rules. Minnie Cochran climbs onto the stage, looking as bright-eyed and enthusiastic at the end of the week as she was at the beginning. Hello, everyone! How are you enjoying life at Iris Academy so far? Are you excited about your magic? Like all of you, I've waited years for this chance to finally set foot in the magical world and find out what I can do. We're only freshmen. We're at the very beginning of our lives. Our futures hold so much more. But to make the most of it, we have to work together to combine our strengths and cover our weaknesses. All of you are powerful. Together, we are unstoppable. As your president, I promise that I will always be available to offer a helping hand to my classmates. Whether that means tutoring on weekends, crafting costumes for performances, cheering for sports matches, I'll be there. I am here because I want to help you get what you want. I'm here to organize and to represent you as a class. So give me your hands and let's see what we can do together. Vote Minnie Cochran for president. Everyone applauds. <laughs> that means it's my turn. <sighs> oh, right, the speech. The speech is the other thing. save I'm not sure I don't remember I, I don't know how badly I want to win this exactly but whoops that's not right oh no whoa sorry about that guys um my computer decided to just shut everything down <laughs> It was like, you're trying to cheat? Shut the game down. No, 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 no. <sighs> Let's try being informal. Hey, I'm Franco and I'm running for class president. I hope you all know that by now. You also know that I'm not from around here. So why should you vote for me, an outsider? Well, for one thing, I'm only going to be here for a year, so it'll be easy to get rid of me afterward. I hear a few faint chuckles. Life comes at you fast. You've got to be ready to grab the chance when it comes. That's why I'm here. I want to make this a great year. Whatever happens, I can tell you that I will give it my all. So are you willing to follow me? 
Vote the Golden Eagle for president. Everyone claps politely. Okay, so I, I shouldn't do an informal one. All right. <laughs> Bye, Minnie. Let's be formal and see if that goes any better. I am a prince after all. I guess I should behave like one. My fellow students, I stand before you today as a candidate for freshman class president. I know I am a newcomer here. It is my goal at Iris Academy to learn as much as I can about your country and your traditions. That is why I want to be a part of the student council, to make the most of my one year in America. I am not afraid to make decisions or to face the consequences of my actions. That's what makes a leader. I'm not going to spend a week on an opinion poll every time I need to make a choice. I will take action and get things done. At the same time, I am always willing to listen and to change when change is needed. So, are you willing to follow me? Vote the Golden Eagle for president. Interesting. Okay. So that didn't really change anything. I probably should have bought the fancy cupcakes if I really wanted to win. After that come the speeches from the candidates for treasurer. Jacob is running as the blazing fire. Ah, blazing, blazing, I see it now. He gives a surprisingly short speech, largely boasting that because his family is wealthy, he can be trusted to handle money effectively. But everyone claps at great volume. I even hear someone shouting, Woo! nearby. I suppose this audience would have been even more impressed by my heritage if they'd known it. The next speaker is Manuel Arias from Toad Hall. Poor Manuel. His speech is so quiet that it's hard for me to make sense of all the words, especially in his accent. I believe it was about being a hard worker who never shirks his duty. There is applause, but not as much excitement. And then it is time for the official voting process. At Professor Postum's direction, we line up single file in the hallway. One at a time, students are allowed into the room to cast their votes. Each student is given a pencil and a slip of paper with the names of the candidates for each office. We are directed to circle the name we wish to vote for, fold the paper in half, and push it through a tiny slot into a box. For president, I will vote for... Myself, obviously. I circle the name myself. For treasurer, I will vote for... Give Manuel a, a chance. I circle the name. Job done. Did it. Now I lose. After all the votes are counted, we assemble again in the gym for the results. The position of freshman class treasurer will be held by... Manuel Arias! He won! Yay! And I'm proud to announce that this year's freshman class president will be... Minnie Cochran! She's so hard to beat. I lost. I'd like to thank you all for your hard work this week. You students are what make Iris Academy truly great. The teachers need to speak to the newly elected officers afterwards to discuss their positions. I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. Well, I get to sleep now. Drat. Maybe I should have got posters. Out of habit, I look for the allowance before remembering that I won't be receiving one until I've paid off my advance. What should I do today? I am going to go to the mall and get my charm. I head out to catch a shuttle. What to do at the mall? Magic shop. Brrrp. When I enter the magic shop, I see that another student is already present, leaning up against the wooden counter to stare at the items on the back shelves. Long dark hair, purple cape. I think I know who that is. I don't intend to disturb her, but as I step closer, she whirls around. <laughs> Hi! Ah, oh, yes. Good day to you. I was simply perusing the wares. 
They remind me of at my ancestral mansion. I'm sure. Ancestral mansion? Isn't she a wild seed? Well, I suppose there are non-magical mansions in America. Maybe she comes from an old colonial family. I don't know anything about her background. What? Before I can say anything else, she grabs the side of her cape, sweeping it up in a dramatic arc, and flounces out of the shop. Like a vampire? Never mind, then. <laughs> Girl, I just came here to get me a blue charm, okay? That's all I want in life. Nice. I know, I need to equip it. Do I want anything else? Actually, I'll use the mouse. Do I want any of these things? I don't think so. I think I'll keep what I've got. Do I want any of these? Smart, meh. Normal wand. Hmm. That gives me smart plus 25, eh? Oops, that's the wrong one. I wanted to look at the normal one. Smart plus 10. So I got an extra 15 smart for double the money. I mean, that's good. Yeah, why not? Although... Maybe I should just get the normal one, because I want to have some money for buying Valentine's cards later. That's important. Okay. I think I'm good. Done. Let's go back to school. I spot William in the hallway, and he waves at me. Hey. Congratulations on your campaign. You didn't win, but you made a good showing. Thanks. He obviously expected me to lose. I suppose everyone did, but I'm sure there was a way I could have won. Maybe I picked the wrong name, too. Who knows? You've established yourself pretty well here. Guess you don't need a nursemaid anymore, huh? Nursemaid? It takes me a moment to put it together. The elections are over. That means someone else is senior class president, and William no longer has any official duties. Like helping me. Aren't we friends, though? I thought now that you're not so busy with student council activities, we might hang out or something. I've always kind of wondered what you do on weekends. Study. It's not very interesting. You're a wolf. I refuse to believe that you study all the time. Well, senior secrets, you know. We have more on our minds. And more need of some time to relax, I would think. I'm sure I'll see you around, but you do better spending time with your classmates. I'll catch you later. William! He heads off to his room. William, you gotta make me work so hard for that booty? Why? Damien, are you here to help me, finally? At midday, as usual, I head to the cafeteria for lunch. I have already taken a seat and begun to attend to my meal when I feel a slight breeze tickle my ear. Not a magical breeze, but the passage of nearby wings. Hello, Franco. I heard that you were running for class president. I'm sorry you didn't win. Yeah, well, there's always other chances. Did you take advantage of the campaign to spend some time with William? Of course. Good. But don't lean on him too much. If he sees himself as your teacher, he'll keep his distance. It wouldn't be honorable for a teacher to be involved with a student, you know. Yeah. I've been trying to figure out some other way to spend time with him on a more equal level, but... 
I don't even know what he likes. Poetry. Really? He was particularly fond of some old movie about boys secretly reading poetry to each other. I've never even seen him with a book. He liked it to be secret. I wonder what he's remembering. <laughs> eh, best not to ask. Don't ask him about it directly. Keep an eye on him, and see if you can stumble into his interest by accident. And it would help to be prepared with examples of writing that I enjoy. I'll have to think about that. Now, may I sit down? Oh, certainly. He sweeps his cape out of the way and takes a seat across from me. So, exchange student, how are you finding our glorious country? You know, not a lot of people ask me that. I think they're so absolutely certain that America is glorious that they take it for granted I must be impressed. The land of the free, the home of the brave. They can't see it through our eyes. I mean, it's a great place to visit, but it's not home. And since he's from the other world... I expect your territory is a lot more impressive than these Vermont towns. Yes. He smiles and shifts subjects. There's a young man in Falcon Hall with a matching wolf brother. Is he your roommate? Luke. No, I don't have a roommate. He was expelled already. That's fast. No, I never had one to begin with. Will this never stop coming up? What were my parents thinking? Damien smiles and bumps the side of his hand against mine where it rests on the table. Okay. Hey, don't feel weird. Every single student at this school is an exception to the rules. All of them. After all, look at me. He certainly is one of a kind. Thanks. Don't mention it. Are you going to eat your salad? I can't help laughing. <laughs> and I wonder why you and Virginia don't get along, Damien. Alright. I need to do this first. Blue charm and normal wand. Look at that! I got a wand now! So cool. It's a little... What are those called? Hourglass. And let's go back. This? Okay. William gave me some advice for my presidential campaign. He suggested picking a theme that symbolized strength or my exotic origins. He also recommended focusing on posters and badges. Especially badges, but that any campaign materials I could afford would be useful to improve my chances against Minnie Cochran. Yeah, I guess I should have splurged. I gotta play around with that. I wonder if I should... I should probably try to win. When I go up against... when I do Minnie's route, maybe? We'll see. Campaign planning. I met with Professor Potsdam to decide on a theme for my campaign and order supplies. I will be running as the Golden Eagle. Campaign footwork. This morning I got up early to begin introducing myself as a candidate for election. Cupcake table. I gave out free cupcakes as part of my election campaign. I think the effort may have been a waste. Maybe it's the cupcakes that don't work as the posters that do? I can't remember. Campaign madness. This morning's election activities were rather frenzied, with each candidate attempting to outshout all the others. Barbara versus Minnie. I'm not certain what set her off, but it looked like Barbara Salmora got fed up with the election campaigning and scared Minnie away from her. Election results. The class elections were held today. Minnie Cochran is president and Manuel Arias is the new treasurer. Raven's Ancestry. I met Raven Darkstar at the magic store in the mall where she mentioned her ancestral man mansion. 
Since she is using a chosen name, I don't know what family she was born to. William's distance. Now that he's no longer class president, William doesn't have to carry out tasks for the school anymore. That includes looking after me. I wonder what he'll do with the extra time. He's never said much about what it's like to be a senior. Man, we have a lot to say about lunch with Damien. Damien sat with me over lunch and we chatted about a few things, like the elections. He pointed out that I shouldn't feel bad about the ways that I stand out from the normal Iris Academy student, because everyone here is pretty unusual in some way. He also told me that William is fond of poetry, but that he keeps it a secret, so I'd have to find a clever way to accidentally share his interests. Schemy fingers, let's go!